welcoming to the 2019 edition of the Human Resource Expo Africa HRA Summit. This year's theme is the art of employee They're going to go through the hiring process, they're going to go through the 
induction and probation period, develop their careers and become leaders and brand ambassadors within your, your organisation. What is their experience as they're going through this employee life cycle? Do they become more engaged? Do they become less engaged? And it's each stage there is the opportunity that we will lose people from the life cycle, the, the employee life cycle, as indicated by the, the small grey arrows exiting the circle, if you can see those. The leaders, what is going to be the impact on our leaders if they're not engaged? What is going to be the impact on our leaders if they are engaged on engagement? If they understand and are behind engagement? We heard Dorothy, the keynote speaker, just, just now saying it's so important. It, it, this is not engagement, it's not just from HR. And two years of having it bashed over my head as a managing director of a company, I'm starting to get it and having to research into this. Engagement has to be embraced by the whole company. It has to be embraced by the leaders and not just human resources. So it's critical that your leadership buy into and understand the impact of engagement can have, bottom line, on their results. On what they deliver at the end of the year because their employees are more productive. So I'm going to go through some of the, 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 the things that can impact on engagement. And we're going to work through the employee life cycle. Now I like putting things in buckets so that I can sort of, I don't group things and look at things separately. So um, I've, I've created three broad buckets that I think can influence engagement. Personality, yeah. leadership, your leadership, management, and that's not just your CEO, that's your senior management team. Anybody in the leadership or management position. And the environment, the processes and systems that we're putting in place to create fair and transparent pay, to, to create good appraisal systems, to create meritocratic promotions, to get feedback to run surveys, the environmental things, some of the things that you guys will be implementing in your organisation. So going back to my theory, my theory was you can hire for the right personality traits. And if you hire personalities that are more likely to be engaged, you'll have an engaged workforce. It seems sort of logical. A biological person. So let's have a look at personality. What do you think would make somebody a naturally engaged person? These are not words that you're going to be unfamiliar with. Ambitious people people who are goal-driven, have a desire to learn, who have good communication skills, they're self-motivated, proactive, somebody that goes the extra mile. But how much does that personality impact on whether they are engaged, and how much does their engagement get impacted by the environment and by the leaders that they're working for? Mark this for a while because this is my big area that I dug into and I'm going to come back to it in a minute. And I'm going to move on to the environment. You guys probably spend a lot of your time creating the right environment for good engagement levels. And you look at ways that you can improve the environment and encourage your leaders to adopt certain practices and procedures to improve engagement levels. So this isn't going to cause you too much surprise. And I'm not going to go through each of these in detail because these are the sort of things that you're, you're very familiar with. You can create policy, process and structure. People like to have policy and process. They, they might actually like, it's human nature. For anyone that's got kids, people, human nature, says that actually we are happier and more confident if we have clear boundaries. So create that environment for your employees. We can set up a transparent and fair pay structure. Something that we're seeing coming in more and more across African organisations where previously it's been a little bit hit and miss. 
very important. You can start offering a little bit of flexibility around that, um, working hours and um, uh, along those sorts of lines. Formal talent, talent development processes. You've got to have this one in here. You've got to give the employees a voice. You've got to listen to them. We can think up these, all these great processes and systems and what we think is going to make them engaged, but let's listen to them. Let's hear if they actually are engaged. Now, I mentioned that we've done a, um, I, I mean, I don't know what your engagement level is like. Our organization, so Executive Search Firm, is a, is a niche firm focused on um, executive search in Africa. Um, so we're not huge in terms of numbers and people. We've got 35 people um, based in the UK, a small team in, in Ethiopia as well. So it's a relatively small team, and I think it's, um, I'm not, not boasting here because I think in a smaller company it's easier for people to be engaged um, or for you to impact and influence on people being behave, behave, engaged. Um, but the most recent employee engagement survey, honestly, Kira, she came running up to me. She was like going, have you seen the results? Have you seen the results? We're officially engaged. <laughs> and we had hit 76.1%. Um, which, which put us out of the good into excellent. In, you know, we went from blue to green. Um, so she was absolutely delighted about that. Um, but so, you know, we, we, we have an environment that, that is engaged. We give our employees a voice to respond through surveys and we listen to what they say and we implement two or three things every time we run the survey that is, is directly from feedback. But it doesn't just have to be formally. You can do it in more formal informal ways as well and on a regular and ongoing basis but employee voice is something she's passionate about listen to your employees we listen to our customers listen to your employees as well so create a learning culture where people put a pulling training towards them have clear onboarding and, and induction processes these are all the things that you can do to impact on the environment meritocratic promotions and good internal corporate communications. Tell your people what is going on. Nothing new here. All very familiar, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, with all of you. What about leadership's role in engagement? What impact can your leadership team have on the engagement of your workforce? Again, I'm not going to go through these in detail, but we are going to be looking for leaders who are committed to coaching their teams, getting involved, who offer autonomy, perhaps have an open door policy for open communication, a 360 feedback style. Not quite got there yet myself. I'm a little bit too scared of what people will say about me. <laughs> but we're looking for inspirational managers holding team meetings, your leaders that are creating an environment to share ideas and successes, leaders that recognize good work, offer clear promotional opportunities, create process and structure. I'm not going to, I, I can see obviously everyone's, uh, people are taking photos of the slides. Just so you know, in your pack, in your um, bags, you should have, as you've arrived, I don't know if you've dug deep, in there is a very nice Executives in Africa USB stick. On that USB stick, you'll be delighted to hear, I believe, don't take my word for it because the organizers said they would do that, I believe there should be a copy of my presentation along with all the other presentations that you're hearing today. So, um, so um, and if there isn't, come and find me at the Executives in Africa stand and I'll happily download it onto your USB stick for you. So, I've created a model for the employee life cycle, um, life cycle to try and understand when and why do people engage throughout this. And clearly, when I started looking at environment and leadership, it wasn't quite as simple as I'd suggested to Kira. It is really quite complex. But does one have a bigger impact than the other? I went through quite a bit on my, if for anyone, any of you that were here last year at my masterclass last year, um, I did quite a lot on the, the, the hiring process and I'm, I'm not going to spend too much time on it, which you, 
probably like going, what do you mean you're not going to talk about the hiring process? This is about recruit, engage, retain. <laughs> That's important. I'll explain in a minute, it'll all become clear. But um, what I covered in my masterclass, the hiring process, I'm talking from everything that you can do right from starting from looking at the reasons for talent shortages and turnover of staff. Getting buy-in from your line managers for workforce planning. It's all the preparation. Creating a culture to attract talent and ensuring that you as HR professionals define your EVP. This is something I'm gonna talk about. Very, very important. We looked at actually assessing and identifying what good actually looks like when you're hiring key roles, not just working for a job description, but sitting back and thinking, what does good look like in this, in this, this role? Getting your line managers into the right mindset, so rather than actually just letting them walk down the corridor on the way to the interview going, who's this person then, who am I interviewing? No preparation, you all know it happens but actually trying to work with your line managers to get them to buy into the interview process, be clear of what they're going into the interview about. And to remind them that this is a sales process, not a buying process. You know, yes, this person's coming for a job at our organization, and yes, we need to assess them, and can they do the job, but we are also selling our company. We are selling our company to that employee, and in a market where talent is short, it's really important that every single candidate, whether you want to offer them or not, walks away having had a fantastic candidate experience. And then complete the process, actually wrapping up the offer process. So that's last year's masterclass. If you want access to my sides for that, come and find me and um, I'll take your details and, and send them over to you. But I did want to say something about EVP specifically with regards to engagement, employee engagement. An EVP, everybody knows, it's the characteristics and appeal of working for an organization. How does that impact engagement? It does. It impacts, according to the Corporate Leadership Council, it improves commitment of new hires by up to 29%. And it also increases the likelihood of people staying within your organization. So EVP is important when we're talking about engagement. I'd like you to consider your job adverts that you're getting out there. The things that, that when people are in this stage of the life cycle, they haven't even entered the life cycle. They're looking at the, com the, the company, your EVP. They're looking at the opportunity through the job description that you have put out there. What are they seeing? What are they hearing about your, what it's like to work in your organization? What do your adverts look like? Are, they, are you actually using words that are gonna engage people? You will be given the opportunity to drive processes, things that you know that, that's gonna pull a naturally engaged person towards you. You will be given opportunity. We, you'll be encouraged to share ideas. We offer meritocratic formations. So think about, look at your adverts and what is going out and, and think to yourself, am I using words that will um, appeal to somebody who is naturally gonna be engaged? And use ambassadors. So again, there's gonna be a lot about, you've gotta, you have to, you have to, the reality has to reflect what you're telling people. So they see the job advert and then they come in and um, you know, the PA is walking, to the, you know, walking them through to this, oh, I don't know why you're coming here. It's a really horrible way, place to work. Or, oh my God, I'm so excited to see you. It's fantastic, what are you here for? I love working here, oh my goodness, my boss is amazing. It really encourages me, it doesn't matter, I can share ideas, fantastic. So use ambassadors in your process. So, why do people engage or disengage? So, as they come in, the hiring process we've talked about, we move on to induction and probation, which are a critical time for your employees in terms of engagement, when you're actually taking them through the induction on the onboarding process. 
they've had this great job description that says it's a great place to work and then they come in and everybody's heads are down and they aren't given an induction program and they don't know what to expect and they're like feel a little bit like a fish out of water not living the reality so set up clear induction programs make it clear what you expect of them in the first three or four weeks explain clearly you I'm saying clearly all the time it's about communication is important communicate to them this is what we expect set boundaries we said boundaries are important this is this is what it, you can do within your role no you can't sign off a requisition for 50 million dollars <laughs> okay that's not that you know that's that's his job or her job I should say her, her job really shouldn't I so make it really clear, very, very important how people come in and seeing if the, the, the reality reflects what you promised them. So good onboarding, good induction. Right from the start, communicate the purpose of the company. At Executives in Africa, our purpose is very clear. But interestingly, I got challenged on this in our last um, study because um, uh, we, uh, the, the engagement survey um, because I, I actually even said to my HR director there's that question about purpose is that the bit where we say we believe we can have a positive and lasting impact on Africa and we do this through providing the best leaders she said yeah <laughs> I went yeah okay I didn't know that was our purpose though <laughs> And so, I mean, whilst all of, all of my uh, em employees know what we believe in as an organization, they know what we believe in. It's part of the reason we're so engaged. We want to have a positive and lasting impact on Africa. Everyone in our organization, they know that. But when it came to the employment survey, I don't think they knew that that was the purpose. So we did a quick email round and made that very clear. I'm being shown numbers at the back and I'm, I'm very conscious that I, I don't want to lose the best bit. So I'm actually going to whiz through some, some of these a, a little bit quickly because I want to make sure that I get to the bit where I find out about the personality, the original question, can you engage for, can you recruit for an engaged em, um, employee? So as people come through career development, they're entering a period of change in their life. Most of you are familiar with this change curve and there's things that we just need to be aware of as people are coming into our organizations and developing their careers. They come on board, they're really excited and then it gets a little bit difficult because they didn't do quite as well as they thought they were going to start, start off with or they hit a couple of brick walls. So the change, we must, must, must remember that when people are coming into our organizations, they are going to go through a period of change. And it can happen it, not just once, it can happen again. And our jobs as human resources professionals and leaders of organizations is to make sure that we get them through that bottom curve as quickly as possible and also that we flatten the curve as quickly as possible. We don't want any of our employees going into deep depression because they're not going to be engaged. few quick reasons why employees um, disengage. I'm not going to go into this in too much detail because you all know. It's generally la lack of recognition. Poor communication internally. They don't know what's going on. They don't see any clear future for themselves in the, in the organization. Well, they're not mentally challenged. These are all things that you can do something about. Quite simply, you can recognize success. Say, well done. It doesn't have to be like any sort of, you know, gold star promotion. Just thank people for a good job on a daily basis. You know, we, we, um, whilst we've been out here, um, I know my team have um, developed, uh, they've delivered one of our um, searches. We had a deadline to deliver a search to a client um, on Wednesday. And it didn't surprise me to see, as soon as that had gone out, an email going around to all our um, employees in the organization to say, just to let you know, we've just delivered the shortlist for um, this company, 
Um, thanks really, you know, Dan and Reese did a great job in delivery. Matt did some fantastic research behind that. QA team were brilliant getting all the documentation together. Well done team, you know, in particular in Sarah's absence, really worked together. And I know that that wouldn't have just been gone around by email, but that Dan and Reese will have gone into the room where our quality assurance is and actually said, Louise, thank you so much. Thank you. You work really hard. Um, and that recognition goes a long way. It's very important. Make sure that people have a clear future. They know where they're going. They understand where their opportunities are within your organization. It's important and keep them mentally challenged. Look at rotations, look at actually making sure that they can share ideas. And as I said, use ambassadors to feed back into your employee life cycle. People who are gonna promote your EVP through the hiring process, through the onboarding process, are gonna live what you are saying. So, back to my original question. What impacts in engagement the most? Is it personality? Is it environment? Is it leadership? Just find out. Okay. I'm going to talk you through, in terms of the, the, the proof of what I found out, of how much of engagement comes back down to actual personality. Now, back in 2011, I definitely have to reread my notes of this because it's starting to get a bit scientific. I've, I'm actually a zoologist by degree, believe it or not, so I, I like my scientific proof. I don't just sort of go out there. I was like, you know, okay, I think it's personality, but I need some scientific proof. So this is, this is the scientific proof bit. It's very interesting. So back in 2011, Christian, um, and Christian et al, and I've got all these references if anyone's interested, showed that employee engagement was strongly correlated to three predisposed traits. Proactive personality, positive affectivity, and conscientiousness. Now, I don't know about any of you, but I, I, when I heard positive affectivity, I was like, what on earth is that? I <laughs> sort, of, sort of get it, but let me just check what that is, because it was quite important. So, the definition here. Positive affectivity is a human characteristic that describes how much people experience positive effects, so sensations, emotions, sentiments, and as a consequence, how they interact with others and with their surroundings. People with high positive affectivity are typically enthusiastic, energetic, confident, active, alert, have healthier coping styles, i.e. they're more resilient, more positive self-qualities, and they also promote open-minded attitudes, sociability, and helpfulness. So these are all the characteristics we naturally look for. So the gut feel was right, but we've got proof now. So I found a paper this is my conclusion of what I found of all my research. I found a paper that had been written and published right at the end of 2018. So this is absolutely bang up to date. And this paper set out to answer the exact question that I was asking. What personality traits are most likely to predispose employees to be engaged at work? And I'm gonna share with you the findings. Their conclusion goes as follows. Our meta-analysis is the most comprehensive treatment to date on the relationship between personality traits and employee engagement, the results of which suggest that personality explains a substantial proportion of variance in engagement. In particular, our work reveals that positive affectivity is by far the most important of these behaviours. Or, or personality traits. And the next strongest predictors were proactive personality, conscientiousness, and extra, extroversion, surprisingly. Doesn't mean that an, introvert, an introverted person can't be engaged. But interestingly, they also said that these three traits explained substantially less variance 
than positive affectivity. And as a result, their results suggested that we should be using personality assessments to help us identify employees who are predisposed to be engaged. They go on to suggest that practitioners should incorpor incorporate, consider incorporating personality measures into their personal personnel selection processes when engagement is a goal, is one of the goals of the selection process, which sort of makes common sense to have as a goal of a selection process to uh, recruit engaged people. So they're not the first and they're not the last to, to um, propose posit positive affectivity as a po potential trait. And there are a lot of other um, documents that I found um, that, um, that, that back this up as well. But there are quite a lot of positive, there are quite a lot of personality traits within that. Now, this recent study suggests that hiring people with the right personality will boost your engagement levels. Easy, off we all go. Just hire people that, ha that show positive affectivity. However, whilst it might look like an attractive um, position for managers, there are some important caveats to consider. Can you imagine if your leaders recruit for optimistic, enthusias enthusiastic people to hire into their team? It's gonna become harder to spot leadership issues because everything's rosy, nothing's wrong, everything's rosy. If you surround yourself by people who are just positive and optimistic, it doesn't actually make you better at your job as a leader. So, we actually need a broader spectrum. We actually need to be bringing in some people with other personality traits Maybe a few who are actually going to be a bit more challenging, a bit more cynical. I found a really good example. They said it's a bit like a restaurant owner saying, I'm going to boost my TripAdvisor ratings by getting people to come into my restaurant who are not really that bothered about the quality of the customer service or the quality of the food. They're all going to go around going, it was great. But it doesn't actually change the quality of the customer service. It doesn't actually change the quality of the product that they're serving. So we need to take feedback. We need to take feedback from our employees. We need to surround ourselves with people who are going to challenge, who are going to innovate, and actually going to cr create ideas. So, my conclusion. Which one comes out on top? We've said you can recruit for a positive personality, but how much does that impact on engagement? Out of, out of my three buckets, personality, leadership, environment, how much does personality impact on engagement? Now, I'm a little bit competitive, never have guessed. So I was quite delighted when I got the results, and there are studies behind this. 50% personality accounts for, okay, it's not all of it. We said it can't be all of it, but 50%, that's like substantially down to personality. If we recruit for people who have a predisposition to be engaged because of their personality traits, then that is gonna lead to a naturally more engaged workforce. But Kira was also right. It's not that simple. The environment, the leadership is also really, really important and you've got to get a balance. So I've talked about person personality testing and just to conclude, obviously personality testing is starting to bring in technology and I'm actually, I'm, I'm gonna be on a, um, a panel it's almost one of the last panels of the, the expo, and we're, we're gonna be um, discussing some of the challenges through recruitment and, and what's, what's um, adding to it. And, and we get asked quite a lot, is technology gonna take over your role as a recruiter? There's people smiling there, it's like, yeah, I get that one as well. 
You know, we've got LinkedIn. You guys can all access LinkedIn. We've got personality assessments. So, you know, no more my, I'm, I'm interviewing somebody and saying this is what their personality. Just come to do a test. A bit of technology. Spurt it out at the end and tell you it. I'm a great believer in balance. I'm a great believer in embracing technology. Personality assessments are very, very important. We use personality assessments. We're hiring the very highest leaders, CEOs, regional directors, through to senior management level. And we use personality indicators, online tests, but we don't use them exclusively. And it's really important where you use them in your process and how you use them. LinkedIn is a great, great tool for connecting and seeing people, but it doesn't tell you anything about personality. And I would suggest probably that where you want to be using more technology, you need, Steve was talking about this, is um, his um, uh, breakfast seminar earlier in the week for anyone that, that was there. And um, it's, um, you, can, you can recruit for a, a, a certain personality. You can go on LinkedIn, but you know, it, it, it doesn't tell you anything about that person. So think about where you're gonna use your resources within your teams. Where do we use technology to make our lives easier? Graduate recruitment, low level recruitment, where actually if we go, do you know what? If we hire graduates with a propensity to be, have positive affectivity, if we look for this through some sort of personality testing, chances are scientifically, actually, we're gonna be creating an engaged workforce. And then you build around them the environment, you build around them the leadership, to actually deliver that. At the more senior level, I do genuinely believe that the human touch is never going to overcome technology. You know, you can't hire a senior leader into your organization from just through use of technology and online, online processes. It needs somebody that is experienced in actually deep dive assessing and understanding, is that person going to fit into your organization in general. So I shall leave you with that. They've been waving up banners at me for the last five minutes saying time's up, time's up. So um, I hope that's been interesting. As I said, um, I was delighted by the outcome. Yes, personality, you can recruit for an engaged workforce by looking to recruit certain personalities but don't get fixated on it. Make sure that you have got breadth and diversity within your teams because that is what's gonna create innovation and ultimately create an engaged and excited workforce which is gonna drive your companies forward. Thank you. Do we have any time for questions? Do we have any time for questions? Yeah? I mean, what's your take with regards to all the tests
I think it's really, I think they're really, really useful to, to use. And, you know, I think the more insight that you can get, the better. Unless your recruitment team is heavily, heavily experienced. Interviewing is difficult. It is really difficult. We all know that. You know, it's, uh, people are, um, you know, if, if somebody wants to ask me, I'm going to tell you all the good stuff about me. It's really hard to find out the, the bad stuff. to direct, it gives you insights for what 